Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So let's talk some quick rules here. If you're doing exponents, there's lots of different quick ways you can go about doing it. For example, if you have the same base um, and you're doing, let's say, I don't know, 2 and to the 5th, and you're multiplying them, you can actually just keep that same base and add these exponents together to give you something like this. Vice versa, if you're dividing, you can just subtract them instead. So I'll give you a negative 3. Um, but in this case, we're doing a power raised to a power. So just like how these have a quick rule, this one does as well. By using this rule expanded out, essentially we're doing x to the third times x to the third times x to the third. So because we're allowed to just add those together, we can just add these together. So we're doing 3 plus 3, which is going to give us 6, plus another 3, which is going to give us 9. Now the quick way of doing that is saying, well, if we have that three times, essentially you're just multiplying. It. So anytime you have a power raised to a power, you can just multiply the exponents together. 3 times 3 is 9, gives us this same answer. That means our final answer here is C. So for number 22, I don't know if we're just supposed to scream 4 as loud as we can or what, but uh, give your ears a break. Uh, I'm going to try to do it mathematically instead. So what does an explanation point mean in math? This is called factor. So whenever you see an explanation point, it means 4 factorial or whatever number factorial. And what that means is you take that number and you multiply it by every number underneath it until you get down to the number 1. So for example, if I did 3 factorial, that means I would do 3 times 2 times 1. So 3 times 2 would be 6 times 1 would just be 6 total. So this is how you do factorials. It's used a lot in like combinations uh, or other types of like gambling situations, permutations, things like that, but just some math and probability stuff. So let's take a look at this one. 4 factorial means that we're doing 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 times 3 is going to give me 12 times another 2 is going to give me 24 times 1 is still 24. So our final answer is D, 24. Let's take a look at 23 here. It says a cubed plus b cubed equals a cubed plus x cubed. Now, it looks like you may be able to do a lot of, like, moving things around. Maybe, like, oh, what's the formula for a perfect cube or something like that? No, you don't need any of that. In this case, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to subtract a cubed from both sides because we're going to move this guy over here. And that ends up canceling out. So all we're left with is b cubed equals x cubed. Now notice it says that b is equal to what? Well, we have b cubed and we have x cubed. But here's the deal. Whatever number cubed here must be equal to this number cubed because they end up with the same answers. And two different things are not going to cube to the same answer because it is raised to an odd power. Now, if it were like squared, I could have like negative 2 squared and I could have 2 squared and those would both give me 4. But in this case, because it's an odd power, it maintains if it's negative or positive. So that means that this number must be the same as this number. So therefore, b must be equal to just x, which is answer b. Number 24 is actually pretty crazy here. It says the sum of integers from 1 to 300. So that means they literally want you to add up all the numbers from 1 to 300. So like 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way up to like plus, I don't know, 297, 298, 299, and 300, and you're just adding all of those up, all right? Obviously, you don't have the time to actually add all these up. So what's a quick way to do this? Well, if you know some of the formulas for, like, certain sequences and things like that, like a sum sequence, you can do that. But I just want to use some common sense stuff here. So first off, this 300. Okay, I have one 300. Then what I can do is link this 1 and the 299. 299 plus 1 is also 300. Then I have 2 and the 298. Well, that's also 300. Then I have the 3 and the 297. That's also 300. In fact, all of these will have a pair all the way to the middle. That 150 in the middle, that one won't have a pair. So we're going to have to come back to that guy later. So how many times will we have this 300? Well, 
There are a total of 300 numbers. If each one is matched with one other, we're just dividing by two. So there's going to be 150 300s. The middle one's there, but we had this extra 300 at the end. So we have 150 of them times 300, because that's what we're going to want 150 times. And if you do that, well, 3 times 15 is going to give me 45 with those three zeros. And then we can't forget this 150 that was in the middle. So we have 45,150, which is indeed one of our answers, and it's answer B. After the last question on the answer, this one is much more straightforward. So it just says y squared raised to the third power. And we had already talked about if you ever have the same base, so like the same thing on the bottom, in this case y, then you're really just doing y squared times y squared times y squared. That's what it means to go to the third power. You multiply by itself three times. With that said, we know by the product rule that if you're multiplying the same base, you can just add the exponents together. So 2 plus 2 is 4 plus another 2 is 6. So this answer should be y to the sixth. And because of this, there's actually a rule that states if you ever have a power raised to a power, you can just multiply them together. So in this case, it would be y raised to the 2 times 3, which is 6, which gives us the same answer. In either case, this answer is b. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today. But remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.